Well, where do I start? It was an ordinary day. I had a whole list of patients. I read up my notes for my next patient, Julie Robinson, and she was having her upper left six removed today because it had decayed. I checked the rest of her dentition, no other fillings. I checked the medical history, all clear. So I went to collect Julie Robinson. I always like to look at the age as well of the patient before I go and collect them. It gives me an idea who I'm looking for in the waiting room. And Julie Robinson is 36. So off I go upstairs to the waiting room to collect Julie. And I shout out, Julie Robinson! And this lady jumps up and she's there and she looks roughly about 36. And we go downstairs and I ask her to have a seat, go through a medical history, any changes, no changes. So it relates to the current medical history that she has. And then I say, well, today we're going to be removing the upper left six. She looked at me a little sort of surprised, but no more than that. She didn't question it. So I said, we're going to numb it up first. And she went, okay. So I popped her back in the chair, popped some anaesthetic in. And at no point did she say, why are we removing this tooth? I'm, I thought I was here for a checkup didn't say that at all. So by sitting in the chair, she's given her consent. By me explaining what I'm going to do, she's given her consent. So then I sit her back and we go and remove the tooth. And I have to say it was quite a difficult tooth to remove. There was quite a lot of effort needed to remove this tooth. And of course it, it would be because it was a perfectly healthy tooth I was removing because Julie Robinson wasn't sitting in my chair. The lady that was sitting in my chair was Ruth Davidson and Julie Robinson was still upstairs. But the coincidence was that they both had an upper left six with a distal occlusal amalgam and no other fillings. They both had a clear medical history and they were both within the right age bracket, 36, Ruth was 42, looked young for her age. So I removed Ruth's tooth and yes, realized that later on that I shouldn't have done that. And I appreciate that I may, I may get struck off for my actions. It came to light when Julie Robinson, who was waiting for her appointment to have her tooth removed, actually went to the desk about 30 minutes later and said, am I going to be seen today? And the receptionist says, but haven't you already been down? And she says, no, I've been sitting here all this time waiting. So then the receptionist rings down to me and said, have you seen Julie Robinson? I went, Yes, I've just seen her. She's left. I removed her tooth for her. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said to me, Julie still sat here in the waiting room. And then it dawned on me that I may have asked the wrong lady to come and have her tooth removed. It's a little bit of a phenomenon. It happens a lot where you go to a waiting room and you call out a name and somebody just stands up instantly. I think maybe it's a nervous thing. They jump up and they go, yes, that's me. I'm here for my appointment. And you go, great, Julie, come on down. Although maybe I didn't say Julie. Maybe I just said, Julie Robinson, come on down. And then left it at that and didn't repeat her name again. So maybe if I had repeated her name again, she may have responded and said, no, I'm Ruth. So, I still have yet to remove Judy Robinson's tooth, if she'll allow me. And I have to um, apologize sincerely to Ruth Davidson for removing her tooth. Hmm. 
yes, the appointment was at 